Hi guys, welcome back. And today in this video, we are going to talk about AI versus QA and five important facts every tester needs to know. Well, I have really not got this fact myself. These facts are something like a most important frequently asked question came as a part of the discussion that we were doing in the session on the AI QA engineering with ShiftSync. While we were doing discussion, there were around 400 participants, which was really, really overwhelming. And we also got a, quite a lot of questions from the audience asking these questions. These are the five most repeated questions. And I think that these are the five important facts and questions which every QA engineer has or need to know while they are going to be surviving in this AI world. I mean, I really have to call this as an AI world now because everybody is talking about AI, at least like 10 times a day for some reason. Well, as I said, let's start to discuss about our first and the foremost important question. Will Gen AI and AI agent replace the work we QA engineer do every single day? This is one of the most prominent question which was asked on the session. And I think this is one of the important fact which QA engineers need to know as well. And you see that I have put a severity level over here. So this is kind of the higher severity questions. And I have just categorized these questions based on some severity as well. So while we go along these particular discussion, we will see the severity level as well. So for this question, I think just a spoiler alert, it will not really gonna take our job or likely to take your job right now, but it will change, it will change entirely. As you can see this particular graph over here, uh, the Gen AI adaptation in quality engineering for 2024 and 2025, we can see clearly that companies are using Gen AI, like 47 percentage of the companies are using generative AI in any of the form, maybe it's a GitHub Copilot or Cursor, or maybe they're using it uh, in the code review or anything like that. So they are already using uh, as a part of it. And you know what, in this article, as you can see over here, Microsoft also said that around 600,000 pull request is being reviewed by the GitHub Copilot's code review tool uh, instead of human doing it, which is amazing. You can see that already companies are starting to use these kind of technologies in there. and also, 47% of the companies, as you can see over here, are actually trialing uh, and developing the roadmaps for using generative AI. And only 6% of the companies are really not in the, in the space of using generative AI for some reason. So this is all coming from the Gemini. I have really not made it up these numbers. I can quickly show you where this report, you can find it as well. As you can see from here, this is the uh, new future in focus of the world quality report, 16th edition of 2024, 2025 over here. So if you just scroll this particular documentation, somewhere here, as you can see, it says that this is the current use of Gen AI solutions, LLMs and SLM models for the quality engineering activities. Only 4% of the organizations are not exploring the Gen AI solutions, making a significant decrease from 31% last year. And 68% are either using generative AI and 34% are developing the roadmaps after initial trials. And this is what is really happening in the US and Canada and Europe, France and UK. Uh, and you can see how they are even adapting in the industries like automotive, uh, leading uh, lead adaptations, uh, financial services and other areas. So this is already happening. This is not something that I'm making up, but this numbers are real. So this is already happening based on Capgemini's report, right? So this is what is really uh, going to be happening in the companies in the adaptation phase. And as I told you, there is going to be a change in workflow anyways, because these companies, as you saw the numbers over there, they are going to be using wipe codings or local large language models or using AI agents at scale and building the AI agents for, for building their own workflow and also using them for the development phase as well as for the improvement of their, uh, their, their application development as well as for the testing. That's what is really happening in the in the workflow and you can see that there are also a lot of emerging tools in this space uh, like powered by ai like uh, knai from lambda test or core testers from test grid test sprite functionalize all these companies as you can see are already using artificial intelligence uh, in their workflow to making things happen and as you can see that gone are those days where we were using or seeing new tools in testing like selenium playwright cypress and all these testing tools emerge every single month or maybe a couple of months uh, after but now these tools are not even coming as you can see over here right all the saturation has already happened in playwright right now and every company is now using playwright for their web scraping purpose 
purpose, uh, like browser use or maybe uh, browser AI or browser. There are so many browser, browser thingy coming up. And every company has got uh, the, uh, the web scraping capability. And these companies are using Playwright for some reason to make that happen. So this is what is really happening. So the, the, the tool has really saturated already, but they are now using the power of AI to empower all these tools. So that is what is going to be the case moving forward. So that is the first fact I think is going to happen right now. All right, the second one that we are going to be talking about right now uh, is going to be as we are using the AI agents like Copilot or Cursor for vibe coding, we tend to forget the syntax soon. How we cope with the interviews if they ask us in coding? So this is another question which was very, very interesting while I heard in the, in the discussion on the shift sync. And I thought like, this is very important fact as well. Like while we tend to use these kind of technologies and tools, we as a brain, like a human brain, we always tend to take shortcuts most of the time. We always think whether this can be used to make our life more easier, faster and things. So if we're going to adapt to these kind of tool, what is really going to happen? Well, guess what? Wipe coding, if we start getting too much in our uh, in our workflow, is not really a bad thing. But the, the problem is uh, we have to be in loop while using these wipe coding. So we don't have to just put like an entire implementation on the wipe coding to do those implementation for us, like a test cases or test plans and stuff. We have to be in loop to see what exactly these wipe coding are doing and make use of this wipe coding tool to at least uh, do some repetitive or babysitting task, not writing the entire implementation for you. If you think that you can write the implementation yourself, do it, but use the wipe coding tool to maybe refactor the code and improve the code in a, in a better way or handling the exceptions and in a better, uh, better coding standards and stuff. Those kind of things you can ask the wipe coding tool to do it. That way you can also learn how you can make the improvement to your code instead of just asking everything to the wipe code and making the wipe code to do things for you. That is going to be a problem. And that way you are, I'm 100% sure, going to forget all the syntax and during the interview process, you may not be even answering a simple syntaxes for that matter. So those are things are really going to happen if you don't uh, use wipe code uh, in a more sensible fashion. So you have to be in loop while you use these tools, because if you give all the control over the wipe coding AI agents, they are going to take over and do things for you. And you will for sure are going to forget everything. So that, that's one of the side effects of wipe coding. So make sure that you are in loop. And the third one that I think just very, very important is how to efficiently use the local large language model with this AI uh, agent, uh, because that is also one of the most important thing that we have to know. And I know the severity is not that much. That's the reason why the severity is in medium over here. So local large language models like Llama or Mistrals, which runs on your local machines and hardware, will actually save quite a lot of cost and it also keeps your data privacy. This is very, very helpful while you do things like you are, you are like a, a garage project that you are building in your bedroom or, or if you're just building things to try out and see how things works. And if you want to really scale, maybe if you want to show a demo, local large language model are better and then you can see how efficiently you can use them and then you can scale up with the same using the cloud providers and things. So setting up a tools like Olama and using the GPU enabled machines or Mac, it's a very, very good start for you to understand how you can use these lo local large language models and then use it for your testing purpose. This is another question which was came as a part of the discussion. And I think this is something I really want to highlight over here. And this is one of the example of using uh, the AI agent with the local large language model over here. As you can see, you can do it uh, or use it for many different operations. You can ask, uh, you can use the local large language model uh, to ask uh, the uh, the web extractions and then use custom tools and technologies to make things uh, like a workflows and use the rag agents and things to make your operation even more streamlined. So those kind of things that you can do. And it's a really fun project to be honest. Pretty much like you remember those days while we used to get uh, what is called as the Raspberry Pi. We, we tried to do some experiment using those uh, Raspberry Pi. Gone are those days. Just use LLMs. These are the computers like how Andrew said, just use these uh, computers and make your project even more enhanced, intelligent. That's what this local large language models are. And the fourth question, which was also more fascinating while I was uh, discussing with the, the, the people were, what's the learning path of the AI in testing and where to start? This is 
this is also quite a critical path because now everybody is talking about AI. We need to know what is the learning path uh, to get into AIs and also testing and also using the AI for uh, the testing purpose. Well, guess what? For like any technology that you can take, maybe uh, a software testing or programming or, or even using computers, you always start with basics right so that's exactly what i feel like we need to know while using these kind of powerful monsters like how this large language model really works that is first one of the most important thing that you can really uh, think of and then how the transformer models which is available right now are really working under the hood and how they are really uh, how they are really storing the data and also how they are interacting what is weights what is the training what is the reinforcement learning so if you understand all these informations it also helps you understand how you are really uh, using these models while you are trying to ask the questions like a prompt and also how you are asking the passing the context, like context engineering and things. And also how to work with these models using local machine, also in the cloud and things. Those are things that we need to understand as well. And how you can test these AI models. This is also one of the important things that you need to understand uh, to see how the model that you have can be fine-tuned, trained, and how you can test them. And then you can also understand how an AI agent works and how to build an AI agent yourself, how to test an AI agent and how you can test the power of, uh, how you can use the power of AI agent for testing uh, by building your own tools and stuff. So those things you, you can learn and having all these knowledge can be really, really helpful because now this technology is still in its infancy. The time while all these are going to be super matured, I'm telling you guys, the basics are going to be the foundation, which is going to help you understand how the, the advanced things are going to be working. And again, if you ask me where we can learn all of these information, we already have a bunch of course in Udemy where we talked about all of these many times. For example, if you're starting the generative AI completely from the ground up, I highly recommend you to go through this course, the generative AI in software automation testing. This is going to give you an overview of how you can use generative AI in software testing, how you can use the local large language model to self-heal locators, and also how you can use for visual testing, how you can use toolings and agents and things. So those things are all cover covered in this particular course. And if you want to uh, really test a large language models uh, built application, then you can use this course, the test AI and LLM application with the deep eval, ragas and hugging face evaluate. So this is going to be covering all the toolings for you to test pretty much like Selenium, Playwright, uh, or maybe browser stack. So all these tools that you have, uh, like how you test the UI application, you're going to be using these tools to test your AI applications and uh, AI enabled applications. And if you want to go crazy and if you wanted to even build your own tools with the power of the large language model, you can use this course, the build and test AI agent with chatbots, uh, rags and olamas with local large language model. And if you wanted to use or harness the power of these AI agents uh, and the toolings that we have learned over here, you can also use this course, the new course that I have released, build gen AI and multi-agent system tools uh, for software testing. This will actually give you an idea of how you can use the power of the AI agents uh, in, uh, in the software testing and how you can use them to build your own tools, more intelligent tools uh, to make it happen. And finally, if you want to go crazy by fine tuning a large language models and adding a weight and also how you can create your own model, like a trained model for your company, this course, understand, test and fine tune AI model with hugging face. This course is going to be one course, which is going to give you a lot of information, which is going to be very, very uh, complex, but it's a really good course. So these are the courses I think that you need to go in this path to understand how things work. And this is the path that you need to choose while learning the AI. And finally, the last most important burning question which everybody has is, what will be the future state of testing? This is a very important question which I really wanted to cover. Like, What will be the future state of testing? Guess what? The AI adaptation and testing trend by 2030 is going to look pretty much like this. As you can see, there is going to be a shift to AI orchestrated workflows. Most of the workflows, which we have already seen, like Microsoft, like 66,000 pull requests per month is being served by the tools like GitHub Copilot's uh, code review tools. This is just the start, guys. And we can see that all the companies are going to shift to the AI orchestrated workflows 
pretty soon. Even the SaaS that is kind of dead right now because now most of the SaaS is going to be going away and these companies like the AI companies are going to take over and do things for you. And this is pretty cool. So that's already, there is a shift already happening there. And then AI in testing growth by 2030, you can see that it is still going to increase a lot. But, and you can see that there is going to be like 37.3 percentage increase. And I think this number is maybe wrong because Forbes and IDC report, maybe it's quite old a report that I have got as well. But actually, this can be even more tremendous. It could be like 50 or 60 percentage growth. And then the IT budget allocation to AI by 2025, this is just for this year, is already 40 percentage. You see by 2030, it is going to increase even more. So that is how the AI adaptation rates are going to be by 2030 for you. And with this, you can already think like how the future state of testing is going to be because already companies are moving towards AI, orchestrating the workflows and things. So for sure, the, the state of testing by that time will be almost automated. So the, the, the most important thing to understand right now is to always stay in line with the trends that is uh, happening at the moment. Every single day, I have been receiving a lot of emails from a lot of companies in the AI companies sending me that this is the new tool that they have built. Can you review it? Can you go and talk about this particular tool? This is something that I have just seen in my inbox. And you can think of other YouTubers or other people or other uh, startup company owners, like they already know what is the future state. They already know what is the future coming to them. A lot of companies are already working on uh, on building something amazing with the power of the large language models. I'm telling you, if you're not riding the wave of the AI, I'm telling you, you're just going to be synced with this particular uh, this particular wave. Riding along with this wave is the is the only thing that I feel like we have to do. We have to learn all these new changing technologies and trends and the AI. What's exactly is happening around and how we can uh, up empower ourselves in our in our testing space by automating because we as in test engineers have one more skill which is the automation skill where we know that every single thing if it can be automated can be automated right we can just take that up automate that process same thing we can use with the power of ai's ai agents and things just pick up those powerful intelligent tools fuse it with our automation process and then try to improve our or, or enhance the, the AI process. That way, it will actually improve the testing process in a whole. So these are the things which I feel personally are, are going to be adding a value for you in your profile to see what is going to be the testing state, right? The testing state for you, if you're going to be empowering all these new technologies within your skill set, this is going to be the actual state of the QA in upcoming years. And I'm telling you, this is going to be fascinating. This is the right time for us to learn all these information uh, in a right way. That way, our future is going to be just glorious. It's not going to be dim. I'm telling you, this that the, the age of the playwright, Selenium, Cypress are almost pretty much uh, in, a, in a brink right now because companies are now seeing what is the next wave that they can take to uh, empower their testing processes. So that's it, guys. These are the these are the uh, five important facts that every test engineer should know to understand what exactly is going to be coming in upcoming years. So once again, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'm sure this video would have helped you a bit. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video. Catch you in the next one.